Yeah. Some of us can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? We don't have to do it if you don't want. Huh? We don't have to do it if you don't want. What are you talking about? Go ahead with JJ. <laughs> JJ, uh, what's the mental recalibration kind of been like for you? Obviously, off the state game, then into finals, then obviously now into the bowl game. What's that whole mental recalibration? Oh, well, it's definitely tough because there's so much, so many things going on in everybody's life right now. Like you said, you know, coming after the state game, you have finals, and you're preparing for bowl practice. You know, you got Christmas coming up. You want to see your family, so it's tough. But at the end of the day, we know that we're we're still student athletes and the football players. So like right now at this point, we all locked in ready for this game. So, and then obviously getting ready for West Virginia, what are, from an offensive standpoint, looking at their defense, what are some of the things that you've learned about them so far? Uh, you know, they're a solid team all the way around. Uh, they got a good defensive line, good secondary, coach very well, really good coach uh, team. Um, yeah. How's Connor been stepping in at, at, as a QB1, basically? Oh, he's been doing great. Uh, you can tell that he's, he's ready. He's ready for this moment. He's been prepared for for this moment and uh, you know he's taking the time out of his day to throw a little bit extra when guys aren't when guys are just you know doing nothing he'll he'll want to text us hey what are you doing let's watch film let's go throw he's excited he's prepared for this game so i'm excited to see what he'll do is we'll it see. weird not having drake around um i mean yeah he's just such a big presence here especially in the facility especially in chapel hill in general but um you know we all love drake and we wish him nothing but the best what's so the connor's strengths you know, he's a very mobile, mobile quarterback. You saw it in the Whopper game. Uh, you know, he can throw the deep ball. He can move very well. So he's an all-around guy. And um, I feel like his biggest thing is he's, a, he's a, a true playmaker uh, using his feet or using his arms. So he's got a lot of tools in his toolbox that he can use that people don't know about. Was there something different about him today now that he's the guy? You can tell he's got that. More, he's got more confidence. He's, uh, you know, he's being louder. He's really directing the offense. You can tell that. He's, uh, he's reading the field a little bit better. He's, he's just really excited to be out there. Like, I mean, like I see him right now working extra. He's, he's just so ready for his opportunity. He's ready for his moment, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready for him. How about the wide receiver room? You guys lost a few guys. The portal, Tez obviously leaving. What does that room look like right now? I mean, we've always had depth in that room. Uh, you know, it's sad to see Tez and uh, Dre and Doc go. Uh, you know, we wish them the best, but I mean, we still got talent from top to bottom. You got the freshman guys like Chris, Paul, and Christian all coming in. They've been producing all in practice all year. So it's finally good to see them, you know, get more extra reps, continue to work with, uh, with you know, the first team offense. So I'm excited to see them. And then, you know, we still got me, Nate, Kobe, and Gavin who've been here for a while. And so we're just excited to go out there and work as one unit. I was going to say, we saw Kobe out there. Are, is that room healthier now than it was before? Yeah. Kind of full complement from what's out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like everybody in the room is ready to go. Uh, everybody's healthy. Uh, you know, everyone has their different <laughs> skill sets, so you really can't really, you know, match us up against anybody because you put anybody out in the field, you can, we can go four wideouts, two wideouts, three wideouts. It doesn't matter. We can go score points, make plays. I hate the hog this. Might you have to do that because there's a lack of tight ends around here right now? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's something we did before with the, without the tight end, so it's just something we're going to incorporate even with, uh, you know, with, with Deems coming in. He's, he's, he's been a heck of a guy uh, in that tight end room. So I'm also excited to see him play. He's from Charlotte. Uh, you know, he's, he's a low demeanor guy who just always works hard, and I know he's ready for his moment too. By the time the West Virginia game starts, it will have been over a month since the state game. Do you think that extended break is a good thing for this team to sort of just flush all that negative feeling out and just get ready for one more, one yeah, more go? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we tried to forget about that game the next day. Honestly, I know, I know it, it, it was tough for me just because of just how the game ended. But you know, it's over with. It's in the past, can't change it. So we're just getting ready for West Virginia right now. Who's kind of stepped up in terms of like a leadership role in that offense? Obviously, without Drake and Corey having two more guys, do you think it's kind of filled that new role now? Uh, definitely Connor, just because he's the quarterback, he has to you know be more vocal. And I see a guy like Willie Lampkin. Um, you know, he's making the. He's always been a. A loud player like all season, but you know, with, with Corey gone, somebody on that line has to really take take control of the offense. And you know, Willie's kind of been that guy for us right now. I know a lot of guys kind of leave at one time with the draft and with the transfer portal and things like that. But you get a chance to kind of talk to them, and do they reach out to you? Do you reach out to them, kind of thing, like you know, after they depart and, and anything like that? Yeah, I'm gonna keep in contact with everybody. Um, you know, they they tell us before they leave because you know we're like brothers, so. Um, that contact's always going to be there. That connection's always going to be there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's their decision. You know, I'm happy for them. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we still got work to do over, over here. JJ, with with the playbook and Connor, does does it have to shrink some? Or is it still sort of the same selection of plays that you had with Drake? Like, how does it? How, do, how does the play selection change? You keep the plays all the exact same because Connor was running the same plays as Drake was the whole season. So it's not like we have to shrink the playbook, you know. 
Connor was he's a smart dude. He was valedictorian at his high school, so he knows what he's doing. He knows the playbook. So it's not like a it, I wouldn't even say it's like a step down. I mean, yes, Drake was a heck of a quarterback, but I mean, Connor's still a you know All American quarterback in my eyes. He's, he, he's here for a reason. So I want people to think that you know it's a step down. It's just it's just a change of scenery. Yep. Have you or anyone else on the team had to tell Connor like, hey, no one's expect you to be Drake in your first game as the guy? Mm -hmm. I mean, have you guys had to kind of walk him off from bat yeah. County a little bit? Yeah, we told him, you know, just go out there and be you. We don't want you to try to be Drake. Don't try to be this amazing quarterback. If you go out there and be you, you're already an amazing quarterback. So you only got to worry about, you know, trying to play too hard. Because if you think too hard, you try to play too hard, you make mistakes. Versus if you go out there and just play football, you'll be all right. You know, you're good. Is he actually valedictorian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was valedictorian in his high school. Yeah, he was pretty wonderful in high school. How's Kobe moving? Kobe? He's moving really well. Um, you know, we thought we were going to have him back uh, a little bit earlier, but, you know, just he didn't feel like it was the perfect time for him to come back. But, you know, I see him out here running, and it's good to have him back. Like I said before, you know, Coach Galloway thinks of him uh, as a Swiss Army knife. You can yeah. put him outside, you can put him inside. He's just a playmaker. So it's, uh, it's good to see him back. It's good to see him running. And uh, I'm excited to really have him in the bowl game. Have you guys thought about the Mayo Bowl result from two years ago, which was kind of a similar scenario, season end on a down note and didn't really play well in the game? Yeah, we all we all remember that game. Um, you know, especially for me, it was tough because we just it just seemed like we didn't want to be there as a unit, and that's something we we don't want that to happen again. And we told everybody on this team this year, you know, if you do not want to play in that game, do not come. If you don't if you don't want to play, don't come on that bus because we were going there for a goal win the game and this isn't this isn't a field trip this isn't just a you know trip to Charlotte to enjoy everything enjoy the scenery we're going there to win we're going there to win the game and we want people to know that on this team that it's it's a serious game and it's not just it's not a joke what makes bowl preparation I guess unique in that sense obviously it's a you know out of conference opponent you get really almost a month kind of in preparation just kind of what makes it so unique compared to you know facing you know Minnesota in week three or yeah, there's so many distractions, honestly. When you think about it, you have two, three weeks of practice. So, you know, some people can get lackadaisical thinking, okay, I'll just start practicing next week. You know, you go to a whole different site you've been, probably never been to. you got events you have to do. It's hard to stay focused for the bowl game. But I feel like now, especially the way we ended with the season, we don't want to end a note like that. I know in the past, we've lost three, last three, four bowl games. And, like, that's – we don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like people, uh, you know, associating me with that. So this, this is a true business trip. Is that kind of what helps keep the focus wanting to end on that? I know, especially after the last few years. Yeah, because if you end, if you end up with a win in the bowl game, it's one, it sets you up for a great, great next season. You, you know, start the next season off with a win and it sends the guys off right. Did yeah, you yeah. realize that, that Drake obviously is the ultimate character and sort of goofball personality wise, but like in terms of personality from Drake to Connor, when you guys are out here or you're going over stuff or he's calling a play, like what are the differences there? Like, I know the voice is different, obviously, but yeah. what, what are some of those differences? Um, I feel like he's, he's still trying to work on getting a little bit louder. I mean, you know, this is really first time con uh, controlling a Division one offense, so it's going to be tough for him just to really build that confidence. But I know at the end of the day he'll be good. And, um, I mean, Honestly, I don't care who they put back there at that point. It's just the quarterback's the quarterback. He's going to do his job as well as anybody else could. So. I know he has said, Connor, that, that he felt like his bowl practices last year, once Jacoby left, were kind of inconsistent. Like, do you think that's a motivating force at all for him this time around, this December, or do you think that's so far in the past that really kind of doesn't matter anymore? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he cares about that anymore. I think he's just ready for this game. Um, like I said, he, he, he knows what's at stake. Um, I know he's – He's not pressured. He's ready to go, and um, you know, like I said, I'm just excited to see what he'll do. I know, I know, I know he's prepared. If anybody on this team, I know that he's ready to go. And ready this game. With regards to the Mayo Bowl two years ago, do you feel like the Holiday Bowl last year was more in a, a step in the right direction of bringing the juice to a bowl game? Because I mean, that was a pretty good Oregon team, and you played them down to the final seconds. So. Yeah, like you said, the Mayo Bowl just seemed just seemed flat all the way around. Um, but. Like you said, we brought the we brought the energy to Oregon. Uh, you know, we didn't come out with a victory, but felt like we still played as a team, played as a unit, um, and we're hoping to end off the same way, going back to you know Duke's Mayo Bowl. I know we started the game off with the, uh, started the season with the Duke's Mayo Classic, so we just try to finish with a win at the Mayo Bowl. So. Yeah. <laughs> what was that Sunday like? A lot of us were waiting around for the bowl assignment to drop. Like, what was that? 
like for you guys, I mean, where you're like, geez, like, you know, it's three o'clock, it's four o'clock, it's five o'clock. Yeah, like, I, know, I know personally, I was checking every bowl site, seeing where we would go, but, you know, I, I had a feeling that um, things were going to be a little messed up with, you know, Florida State getting screwed up, not getting into the playoffs. Yeah. You know, that was going to shake up a lot of ACC teams. And then, you know, just, it just time was just moving and moving and moving, and it seemed like we were like the last team to get picked for a bowl. But, you know, we're, we're grateful for Duke's Mayo for letting us come and play in Charlotte, and uh, we're excited to go and play the Duke's Mayo Bowl. You want to see Matt take a mayo bath? Uh, yeah, I would love to see Coach Ross take a mayo bath. But I hate mayonnaise, but I, just, <laughs> I love mayonnaise. I love Duke's mayonnaise. <laughs> I hate mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. Working at NIL. There, there's, there's an example of your growth already yeah, right there. It's all about that, the that's, the, that's the con major. Yeah, right. It's just all about the editing, right? right? Yeah.